A Russian warship has just fired upon a NATO ally, and in this video we're going to give you all the facts, evidence, and little details that you can't get anywhere else, giving you a full global picture of the insane escalations happening between these two world powers that is slipping in to utter chaos. Yesterday, a Russian warship fired warning shots at a Turkish fishing boat in order to prevent a collision. Now, of course, this incident may seem minor, but if you look at the global events that have been transpiring, you know that they have grave implications. This incident happened in the Aegean Sea, mainly because Russia, from the Black Sea, is using its ports to resupply its troops inside of Syria. Now, Russia does this by going directly through Istanbul. Turkey could at any time cut off this very important passageway, cutting off military supplies inside of Syria to Russia. This has not happened yet, but with these incidences that are happening all around this region, it could happen at any time moment. Last week, we reported to you on wearechange.org how Turkey is now threatening Russia in response to what they're calling a provocation. Turkey is saying that a Russian serviceman who was going through Istanbul was spotted holding a rocket launcher on his shoulder as he was passing through that very important passageway that we have been talking about. As we're speaking now, the Russian Navy had to chase off Turkish vessels that were impeding their drilling platforms that they were moving in the Black Sea. Russia's two major rigs were being moved to a new location in the Black Sea when a Turkish vessel with a Turkish flag crossed the convoy's path. Acting in violation of regulations for preventing collisions and against the general accepted conventions of navigation, the Turkish vessel failed to get out of the way of the convoy. It approached crossways and attempted to stop its course, thus creating potential for a collision. And they also cut off their radios and had radio silence during this incident. Russian vessels were sent in, no shots were fired. But as we know, if you have been studying history, especially incidences like the Gulf of Tonkin, we know that one small incident could spark off a global conflict and a full-out war between these two major superpowers. Turkey is saying its patience with Russia has a limit and it's coming to an end. This is creating a chaotic situation between these two countries and their relations. As we know, with Turkey being a part of U.S. and NATO, if there's a war between these two countries, the United States and NATO has to back Turkey in this conflict. This is a very dangerous situation, especially with Russia being as unpredictable and aggressive as they have been geopolitically. We know this incident is all transpiring because the Turkish government just a month ago shot down two Russian warships inside of its border. Russia is now responding and as we're speaking right now Russia is sending more aircraft inside of Turkey to conduct observation flights. This is happening now. Will Turkey shoot down this aircraft? We do not know. Will they escalate the situations more? We do not know but Russia is not blacking down in any way shape or form and they're also deploying more missile systems, advanced missile systems that could be used to shoot down Turkish aircraft if their aircraft are threatened. Russia is resupplying a lot of its heavy military equipment inside of Syria and they also are boosting their strategic nuclear forces in their country around their border regions close to NATO bases in that specific geopolitical region. Putin also made a statement recently saying hopefully no nukes will be needed against ISIS. What Putin is saying more directly is we have the capability to use nuclear weapons. Don't give us an excuse to NATO, Turkey, and the U.S. Don't do it. That's exactly the message that Putin is sending by giving this very important statement. As we know, if nuclear weapons did not exist, Russia's military is not as powerful as NATO's military and Russia's military would lose. With nukes in the picture, Putin and Russia know that this is their trump card and this is one way that they could win a possible war between these two major superpowers. Turkey also is in a losing position because Turkey is not energy independent at all. It relies on Russian imports of oil and in 2013 Russia signed a deal with Turkey saying that they would build nuclear reactors. They have stopped building those nuclear reactors now. They have slowed down the process putting Turkey in a very difficult situation especially when 
economically they could be screwed over by Russia at any moment. Turkey has also been withdrawing some of its troops from inside of Iraq. Iraq has been shocked that Turkish troops have been fighting inside of Iraq, but now Turkey is withdrawing some of those troops. Iraq also is canceling their security agreement with the United States and are inviting Russia to fight alongside of them to get rid of ISIS in their country. As we know and as we have reported to you, the Iraqis do not trust the Americans. They say the Americans are in cahoots with ISIS, especially when you look at the latest developments. Syria also is telling NATO to keep out of its country or they will get shot down. Because of Russia's new military systems, because of Russia arming the Syrian government, they now have the capabilities to do that. Now, why would Syria give NATO such a strong message saying that they're going to shoot down their aircraft? Well, let's look at what happened just on December 7th alone. On December 7th, the United States-led coalition bombed a Syrian military base in the east of its country, killing three soldiers, wounding at least 13, and destroying vehicles and equipment. This is the same Syrian military base that has been fighting against the rebels, that has been fighting against ISIS. The United States bombed this base. That's why Syria is saying, we have the equipment now, we're going to shoot down your aircraft if you do come into this region. And now the United States, in the mainstream media, this is obviously you're not getting a lot of this news in the mainstream media, but MSNBC, the piece of trash, filth news organization, the whore stream prostitutes are reporting how Obama's getting the last laugh against Putin because Putin was not able to destroy ISIS within three months. And they're saying, yeah, Obama, this is just insane. This, this total out of 1984 script writing insanity by MSNBC going against Putin for trying to get rid of the Syrian rebels and ISIS, uh, showing the effects of that he, he has been made, saying, oh, yeah, he hasn't won completely yet. And that's why Putin, that's why Obama's, you know, better and right in, with his strategy. When you will not get this news anywhere else. Um, especially on MSNBC, because lawmakers, even congressmen within our own countries, are launching an official congruent investigation into the allegation that President Barack Obama has deliberately manipulated intelligence reports from Syria and Iraq, allowing the Islamic group to thrive. As we know, Obama has just signed the NDAA, the Defense Authorization Bill, giving $500 million to so-called moderate rebels. As we have documented, a lot of our money, a lot of your taxes that has been given to moderate rebels have actually come into the hands of ISIS. But if you look at some of the so-called moderate rebel groups inside of Syria, they are not only fighting with ISIS, but they're also calling for Sharia law to be imposed inside of Syria. Look at these moderate rebels. They are also sending in mortar rounds into heavily populated civilian areas that are killing civilians indiscriminately. Just a few hours ago, this incident happened. If you look at the U.S.-led coalition, Saudi Arabia has not flown one mission against ISIS in three months. Jordan, four months. The United Arab Emirates, nine months. If you look at the behavior of the State Department that created the rise of ISIS, you could see the Hillary Clinton Foundation and Bill Clinton Foundation receiving a lot of money from these Middle Eastern countries that are not doing anything against ISIS. When Hillary Clinton was head of the State Department, she was approving weapons deals to these countries. And a lot of these weapons from our supposed allies, from our coalition, are ending up in the hands of ISIS in the region. There's a lot that the mainstream media is keeping away from you that they do not want you to know. They write crappy little articles talking about how Putin hasn't defeated ISIS yet. But if you look at the decisions made by our own very government, you could see the direct collusion of the Syrian rebels to get rid of Bashar al-Assad, the main geopolitical goal by the United States that has led to this insane escalation between a US-backed ally, Turkey, and Russia. It is not looking good geopolitically because anything at any moment could spark an incident and there's many incidences happening all the freaking time and it's very hard to report this to you but we are staying as much as we can looking at all these reports giving you the news unbiasedly with the sources below so you could fact check everything yourself
This is only going to lead to more escalations. The situation does not look good in any way, shape, or form. And if you've been watching this YouTube channel for a while, you know that this is no surprise to you in any way, shape, or form. I want to thank all the amazing individuals who are giving at least $1 per month, keeping this independent media organization alive so we could provide you this news unbiasedly. We could provide you this news quickly as it's breaking to you like nobody else. Thank you again so much for watching. We're going to have more important developments here for you independently by youtube.com forward slash we are changed. Subscribe. We're going to have a lot more content coming here your way without any corporate or government influence.